Welcome to episode 225 of Clarity Compressed. My name is Paul J. Daly. I will be your host, and today we're going to talk about the difference between being spoiled and acting spoiled. One is worse than the other. <laughs> Let the good times roll. This is Clarity Compressed. So summer finally hit in Syracuse, New York. Actually, summer hasn't officially hit on the calendar. And for, for those of you that live in nice weather climate, summer hits, you know, maybe in February or maybe summer never really goes away. But in upstate New York, in Syracuse, summer just hit. And what I mean by that is like we've had a week or two stretch where there was no snow, right? I mean, it has been a while since it snowed, but there wasn't any snow, um, but there actually was like a lot of really great weather, a lot of sunshine, a lot of warm weather. I'm such a baby when it gets into like mid 80s, I start to be like, man, I hate this heat. Right? So if you're from a nicer place, you already know, like, yeah, you have no idea what heat is. And I'm a baby, right? Maybe that's one of the reasons that, uh, you know, I live in Syracuse is because I like this climate. But either way, summer hit. And so all the summer things happening, we're carrying out the outdoor furniture. We're unloading it all out of the barn and getting it outside. Uh, we got the pool open. And so I'm starting to, you know, have fun through the balancing of the pool chemicals to make sure that our the saltwater pool is nice and clear and ready to swim in. The kids have been splashing in the pool uh, all this last week. And this weekend, we got the pontoon boat out. About a year before COVID, we got a pontoon boat. And I had never owned a boat before, but, you know, we rented one. We had such a great time. And we were like, hey, if we have this boat, we won't do all these other things that cost a lot of money. Um, that's a lie that you tell yourself, by the way. <laughs> but either way, we've had so much fun on this pontoon boat. We had it throughout COVID, which was amazing because boating was one of the things that you could actually keep doing even during COVID. So um, we really loved it. And we were out there on the water enjoying time. And my girls, so I have uh, four kids, uh, 15-year-old son, 13-year-old daughter, 10-year-old daughter, two-year-old son. And the girls hatched a little plan. And the plan was... I think we need a new puppy. And that plan turned into showing pictures and ooing and eyeing. And they roped my wife, Sarah, in on the game. And then once she got in on the game, then it really gets difficult because she sees the puppies and she becomes the ringleader. Right? And uh, so we have four kids and we currently have three dogs. I know what you're thinking, like this dude is crazy. So we have three dogs and it's funny, we were noticing over the weekend as we were sitting outside, now the furniture's outside, right? We're sitting outside enjoying a little fire because it was, you know, probably in the 50s at night, which is perfect, by the way. We're sitting out and we noticed that our oldest dog is really connected with my oldest child, right? My son, Miles, and he's kind of the smallest dog we have, but he was the first dog that Miles connected with. And our middle dog, Rufus, big German shepherd, is connected to my middle child or like second child now Brooklyn and then our third dog Remington who's an Australian shepherd a little bit of a, a feisty troublemaker he's connected with our third child Elise and so and it was funny to watch to, to watch throughout the day them each have their little bond and their little connection with their respective dog and everyone has fun together but you know this is just one of those things and so then we looked at our two-year-old and we were like Oh, he doesn't have a little dog to connect with. And our two-year-old is actually the size of a four-year-old. And he's kind of a brute. And we were like, wouldn't it be funny if we got a tiny little dog, like a teacup dog that he connected with, and we named it something that was like larger than life because he's big and, you know, kind of like buff and tumble. And like we got a little dog and we named it like, like, a, like after a, a Greek god. So the name Ramses started floating around because our dogs are Rambo, Rufus, Remington. Well, we probably need a little tiny dog, name him big God name, Ramses. All these things like really just started to, to spiral pretty quickly. <laughs> and before you know it, there are pictures being passed around. And there are places all over the country that have these cute little dogs. And they, they're showing the dog picture to little Jaden. And later on in the day, they're like, Jaden, who's this? And they show a picture of the dogs and he goes, Ramses. Right. So now he even knows the name of the dog that we don't even yet own that may or may not even be available. And all of this setup, right? If you have kids or dogs, like you were able to connect with everything that I'm using here to set up. My son, my oldest son, and I had a conversation 
as we were talking through the dogs and he's like, I don't know, dad, do we need another dog? We have enough dogs. You know, we have enough. He's thinking, I'm like, well, why is it that you feel, you know, caught up about, about getting another dog? He's like, well, we already have so much, right? We already have so much, like so many things in life. And it, it's great. Like, like feeling guilty almost about getting something else and another good thing. And I talk about my, my upbringing and I grew up, I didn't have a lot. Um, you know, our family, very blue collar, we got by and we didn't have a ton of pets. We didn't have a ton of space. We didn't have like a boat. We didn't have any of that stuff. And so, you know, I'm excited that, you know, I've been fortunate enough and God has blessed me enough to be able to, to provide those things for my family, but they're not why we're close as a family. And so as my son asked this question, I started thinking through and talking about well, what it is to be spoiled. I think we all want to spoil our kids. And I say spoiled with uh, air quotes. We're air quotes spoiling them. And that means giving them good gifts, giving them things that enrich their life and enrich their enjoyment. And I, you know, give them experience across different areas of life and different avenues of life where they can, they can kind of feel this and, and get to experience that, right? We all want to give our kids that. Right? So we do want to spoil them with stuff. We want to see them smile. But for me, the difference comes not when they are spoiled, when they get spoiled, they get stuff, but is when they act spoiled. And that is when the hammer drops. That is when it's over. That's when we take the stuff away and we show them that life isn't about any of those things. And the difference between being spoiled and acting spoiled is everything. Because what we want to raise our children to do, and I think people can, you have a lot of stuff, but when they still evidence a selfless care for other people, which is a constant struggle for everyone, myself included, when they evidence a being okay with not getting something, right? You know someone starts acting spoiled when all of a sudden they can't have something and they start to throw a fit. A lot of adults act this way. Go on social media. A lot of people act this way when someone doesn't give them what they want or respond like they want them to respond, right? We see that in cancel culture. And we see a bunch of grown adults acting like children, actually acting worse than children because we would never allow our kids to act like a lot of the adults act in these situations. So being spoiled and acting spoiled are actually two amazingly different things but that kind of orbit around this thing of having stuff and having things go your way. So I know it's a pretty profound conversation actually to come up like out of nowhere this weekend as we were just enjoying some time on the boat or enjoying some time and talking about maybe getting a new puppy. And if we do, I promise I will show pictures. And the puppy that they want to get actually is insanely cute. But we're going to wait for that. Maybe it's, he's really little too. So maybe like when we do that, I'll like just pick him up and like put him on the desk in front of the camera. When we do that, meet Ramses. And there's a Nacho Libre reason we want to name him Ramses too. And if you've seen Nacho Libre, you know what I'm talking about. And so I think the question and the conversation and all of this stuff that has come up out of this really just turns this up in me is that there is nothing wrong with having a lot. I, you know, it, it was kind of demonized in my mind as I've, I've gone through life and have grown in business and have had, had expanded means, you know, and I'm still trying to make more and steward more and get more. But there's a massive difference between getting it and what you do with it or how you act with it or how you expect other people to treat you, how you expect other people to respond, what you expect them to do. Big difference between being spoiled and acting spoiled. So those were some things I've been thinking about. I thought I would share them with you because I know a lot, of, a lot of you in this audience are parents or leaders or in business or really just committed to kind of examining what it is that you do so that you can get a little bit more perspective on why you are the way you are because that perspective is clarity. Thanks for listening. I'll see you next week. Don't act spoiled, but I hope you're all very, 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 very spoiled. We came to fight